All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Um, so today we are talking about the ESSA dashboard. Uh, this dashboard is currently sent out. We sent out a priority notice last week from um, the communications team that had the information with links and passwords to be able to go in and review. Um, so if you have not seen that, please make sure that you reach out to someone in your district, probably superintendent, um, to make sure that you have that information. All right. So today we're going to be discussing a sh just an overview of what the ESSA dashboard is. Uh, we'll be going through the data elements, where the data is coming from, which reports they're coming from um, as well. Then we'll go through a bit of information about our suppression policy, as those are some of the common questions that we get about the ESSA dashboard. And then we'll have a quick little overview of the re review window timeframe um, and when all of the um, review needs to be completed. Then we'll have time for questions. So the ESSA dashboard is a federally mandated um, dashboard that we have to report every year. So this is um, fulfilling the um, Every Student Succeeds Act. Um, and so we are uh, fulfilling that requirement by posting this dashboard. It's just a quick view of the dashboard. These are um, every district. Uh, we have a statewide level, a district level, and a school level for everyone. Um, so if you have multiple schools, you would want to go in and make sure that you're taking a look at your individual schools. Um, and then if you have just multiple districts, you would want to go in and look at each of those as well. Um, so you can just toggle between the screens. Um, this is um, the 2021-2022 year, but we are currently reviewing 2022-2023. So the one that just came out is 22-23. Our data sources are from the 2022-2023 certified data sets. This data is currently locked. It cannot be edited. It cannot be updated in NEO. Um, this is this review period is really just to make sure that the data that is posted is accurate and reflects what was certified last school year. Um, so you're just making sure that everything kind of looks accurate for your district. When you're looking at school level data, you are looking at a, a attending student details, reports and things like that. So those are going to be on your attending students. Whereas when you're looking at district level, that will be all of your responsible students as well. So that would be just students that you send off to another high school. It could be students that you're sending to another um, concurrent school. Um, so it's not necessarily just your attending students, whereas the school level is just going to be the students that are present in your building every day. ESEA demographics report uh, is based on May 27th, 2023 attendant uh, uh, enrollment data. So it's going to look different than many of the other da data sets that are on our public da dashboards. The uh, reason for this is that it's based on the assessment ESEA demographics report, which is submitted for 527. And um, so that's why we, we base this enrollment off of that. So if this data looks any different for some of your data sets, then like your chronic absenteeism in your NEO report or in your data for behavior, it's because it's based on these students in um, that were enrolled on this specific state. So these are your data sources, just something to note here um, that the student demographics are based on ESEA demographics indicating. So we have these stars on here to indicate 527 enrollments included only. Um, that demographics report is one of those reports. So it's not going to look exactly like your October certified data, and it's not going to look exactly like your April 1 enrollment certified data. It is going to be based on your enrollment data that was submitted for ESEA demographics on 527. Teacher workforce certification and support staff are all based on the December 1 snapshot. Chronic absenteeism is also based on the 527 enrollments and its daily attendance certification that that comes from, um, but it is kind of broken down to only have your full academic year students on there. So it's going to, your numbers should be comparable, but they will not match up exactly. Bullying behavior and uh, restraint and seclusion are based on the all year data sets for bullying behavior and then restraint and seclusion. School safety is your CRDC reporting, so that may be a couple years behind as we are still currently reporting 
uh, the last couple of years of CRDC. Uh, state assessment data is going to be coming from your state assessment that data that was submitted and high school graduation should match your graduation report that is in email. So once again, just as a reminder on this dashboard as a specific example, um, this is your demographics data that will look something like this. Um, and your enrollments are based on that October, or sorry, on that 527. Um, so these numbers are, um, when I went and looked at this data set, they were close to the numbers that were reported here, but they were not quite exactly the same. Um, so once again, keep in mind that your numbers are not going to match up to October. They're going to be based on your ESEA demographics report on 527. Chronic absenteeism is from your student daily attendance certification report. Uh, a chronic absenteeism, whoops. chronic absenteeism is the percent of students enrolled in a school for at least 10 days with 10% or more absences unexcused or excused within those days of enrollment. So those are um, any absence, unexcused, excused, however it may fall, um, if they reach 10% of their enrollment time period, which is the number of days of attendance that are entered for that student, they are going to be considered chronically absent. This data does not include pre-K students and will only be based on 527 enrollments on this dashboard, which means that it's going to look different than the other dashboard in the warehouse that we have. So currently, that uh, this is more of an illustration of what I'm talking about here. So the ESSA dashboard for this school has um, is based on the 527 enrollments, indicating overall um, chronic absenteeism of 26.8%. If you look at the uh, data warehouse data, it's going to have 29.24% and 30.41%, uh, which does not match up. Um, so those those are all going to look different. And then in your private um, data sets in your daily attendance certification report, it's also not going to match there because you're looking at all of the students who are enrolled through all of the year, not at your full academic year students um, who are reported on the dashboard. So they should be somewhat comparable, but they are not going to be an exact match. Um, so just something to kind of keep in mind as you're going through embedding this data. The other really big question that we get is data suppression. Um, we do have a data suppression policy posted on our webpage. Um, you can find it on the left hand column of our help desk website and uh, the data policies, uh, the data suppression policy is within that page. Uh, suppression identifies any pop is any population size less than five. If you can identify a student group, um, or a student category of any students group less than five, then you're going, we're going to have to suppress that information. That's to protect student privacy um, and obey student privacy laws, um, especially such as FERPA. Um, so that's one of our suppression policies. We also have complementary suppression, which means that if you can use a data set and we identify a number to identify a group of students that is less than five, like you can do subtraction from the larger set to find that small group of five or less, then we are going to also suppress that data. So there may be some data sets that you're seeing that are going to be suppressed. Common, um, I just pulled a random graduation set here. Um, reasons that this may be suppressed. Uh, if you have a student population of 100 students and two students did not graduate, then that entire graduation rate is going to be suppressed because those two students privacy needs to be maintained. Um, so that is one of the reasons that this may be suppressed here. Um, if the student population is 100 students and four students graduated, then um, the rates are also subject to suppression. So it has to reach that above five group in order to be there. So we do get a lot of questions about this that, you know, we had really excellent graduation data. Why is it not on the dashboard? Um, well, you only had two students that graduated uh, or two students that didn't graduate, so we have to um, suppress that data. So that's one of the reasons that you might be seeing this suppression here. 
Another reason is that it could be identifying a population in a group or a category, so male and female. If you have um, two males that didn't graduate um, and five females that didn't graduate, then we would have to suppress the male population to make it so that you couldn't identify those two students. Um, so just be aware of that, that if you're looking at large groups, small groups, things like that, then you're going to have to um, keep in mind that suppression is going to play a factor. So if you're looking at your certified data sets in NEO and you're identifying groups less than five, those are going to be what you're seeing as suppressed. So the window opened last week. Um, the link was sent out from Marcus Marelka um, and uh, went out as a priority notice. So likely superintendents received this. If you do not have the link to it, I would reach out to them first. Um, if you're having any other issues, um, please feel free to reach out um, as well. The data that is currently publicly posted is the 21-22 data. Um, so this dashboard, the 2223 data, is hidden behind a password protected um, uh, page on the website. So you will have to have that priority notice in order to get in and get access to it. Um, the, date, the current date for publication is Monday, February 12th. So that is when the dashboard should be going live. That may change. We're not... Um, 100% sure. Depends on how the review period goes, what we get for feedback, what needs to be fixed, and things like that. So um, best practice, have as much done as you can by Friday, February 9th. If you have any questions about this, please contact the help desk. Um, and if you have any other questions about where data is coming from, anything like that, uh, the website, our website is also a really great, great resource. So that is what we currently have. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to raise your hand or put them in the chat. I did see one come in um, about the current published data, and that is 2122. Uh, the 2223 data is currently under a password protected link, so you will need to have that. All right. If anything comes up, once again, please feel free to reach out to the help desk, uh, metams.helpdesk at maine.gov, or give us a call 207-624-6896. Um, you can also reach out to me directly, alexandra.cupson at maine.gov, um, if you have any other questions as well. So, um, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day, and um, one more slide here. Uh, um, I hope everyone has a great rest of their Tuesday. We do not currently have any other webinars scheduled currently for February or March at this time, uh, but keep an eye out. We'll try to get some information out to you as soon as possible.